This is Barry here again and we're going to do our third um, training video on accounts. Uh, in the first video we did the setup uh, and the setup is important to understand how to set up banks, set up customers, track bills and invoices and do your incomes and expenses and enterprises. Then we moved on when we had the setup done we showed you how to put in some of the typical transactions that you would get uh, on each month. So we have your, your incomes, your expenses, your bank transfers. We showed you how to um, do bills and invoices. The next step is uh, you would typically leave let a client put in all of the transactions for the first month. So in the example we were following, we were doing 2009 accounts and we were starting off in January. So the logical thing to do would be to use your bank statement and your checkbook to get in all of the transactions for January 2009. And before you go into February 2009, we would recommend you do a reconciliation. Now you don't have to do reconciliations, but we would recommend it. And what a reconciliation is, it's a process by which you can prove to yourself and to your accountant that all the figures are right. So when, I, when you come into reconciliations first, we, we have a blank screen. We go new at the bottom. And let's say we have all the transactions done for January. See up in the top left, we have a date here. And it's t defaulting to today's date. But let's say we want to do a bank rec up to the 31st of the 1st, 2009. And notice now on the bottom half of the screen, the only transactions that are coming up on the bottom half of the screen were transactions up to and including the 31st of the 1st, 2009. So we're doing a bank rec for that month for that bank. Now, what you would need to have in front of you now is the printout from the bank or the actual bank statement that was either posted out from the bank for that month or else you might have downloaded from your banking online. So you take a, a, a pencil and you look at the first transaction on your bank printout and let's say the first transaction on your bank printout is a transaction for 1,420 euro. So you look for 1,420 euro on the bottom half of the screen. You can see it's there at the top. So if I double click on the 1,420, see the way it shoots up to the top half of the screen. What you're telling our firm software there is that the actual amount of money, 1,420, is exactly the amount of money that's written on the bank printout because you're looking for mistakes. It's relatively easy to type in a wrong figure. We could easily have put that number in as 12. 140 instead of 1420 just by getting our digits wrong. So the whole process of doing a bank rec is that you cross check that the figures are exactly as per the bank statement. So then if I go down and I look and I see that there's another, um, uh, the next second transaction on my printout is 1200 euros. So I find the 1200 euro here and um, I shoot it up to the top half of the screen. And then let's say, for example, we find a transaction on the bank statement that we don't have on the screen. So I look here and I discover that there's there's a, a, a amount of money for 333 euro and it's not on the bottom half of the screen. So I've obviously forgotten to put it in. So what you would do in this case is you would go save on the bottom left and then we've saved the work we've done so far. Close out of here. You can see that I have a, a record in this screen, but I come back into my transactions. Then I go new in here. I'm in payments and receipts. I go new. I go to a new payment. This is the payment I forgot to put in when I was doing my transactions for January. And this is what the bank reconciliation process is for. It's to find the mistakes, to find the things we didn't put in. So let's say that we're going to put in a... Now you might have to go back to your checkbook stubs to find out what was that check for 333 euro. So I'm just going to put in a bogus transaction here just to show you the logic of what it was for. So let's say it was a contractor. I have to put in the amount and go 333 and I go save at the bottom. Now if you put your transactions in correctly in the first place, you obviously wouldn't have to leave the bank reconciliations, come back and put another record in here like we've done. But let's say you put in the transaction that was forgotten about. Then I come back into reconciliations and I double click on the record at the top. So I'm, I'm just expanding more reconciliation. So now you see the way I have my 333 euro on the bottom half of the screen. I double click on it, it shoots up to the top half of the screen. I take my pencil again and I put a little tick beside the 333 on my bank printout that's sitting on the desk in front of me. So we keep going through that process uh, until um, all of the transactions on your bank printout are ticked and all of the transactions on the computer are on the top half of the screen. One little point to show you there, this is the, f in our example, we were doing January 2009. And let's say that you have checks written in 2008 that only cleared the bank in 2009. 
Well, they're quite straightforward because you simply put those checks into the computer, date them 2008, and that works fine. So you see the way down here, see on this record here on the very bottom left, I have the 15th of December 2008, Kerry Co-op, 1200 euro. So that check was written in the previous accounts here, and it's only clear in the bank in January 2009, and that's fine. So all you do is you put the transaction in, date it in December 08, clear it in January 09, doesn't make any difference then after that. So if I shoot that up to the top half. So if I clear all of these transactions, move them up to the top half, keep moving them up. Now what should happen here is, see the way there's a, a statement balance here? See up on the top left it says statement, or up on the top right it says statement balance 5,818. Now if you were to look at your bank printout or your bank statement sitting on the desk in front of you, the closing balance at the bottom of the January 2009 bank statement should be exactly 5,818.00. Now if you can get those balances right, it means that you've put everything correctly into your firm software, which means that all of your reports are going to be correct. So when you've that done, you go save. Now, one little thing before, that, see this little thing here called is complete. I would probably recommend it if you get the month of January reconciled to the cent, I would put a tick in is complete. So you're basically saying to the farm software, don't let me ever mess this month up again. Protect all my figures so that um, I can't change them by accident. And if I go save it on the bottom left, see the way I'm back to my bank reconciliation screen, I can see my it shows me my closing balance at the end of January 2009. That should correspond with the closing balance on the bank statement you got for January 2009. When I want to do, uh, when I put in my transaction, transactions for February 2009, what you'll do then is you'll go new on the bottom left and you'll put all of your February transactions into a totally separate batch. So all of your January trans, uh, reconciliations are in one batch and you put all of the February ones into a second batch. So that protects your work as you go along. So when you say is complete to January, it means you can't go back and change those figures. You can't mess them up because you already have made the effort to check them against the, the bank statement. So that's the bank reconciliation. Again, if, if you want detail, definitely do a bank reconciliation. If you're under pressure of time and you just don't have time to do it, it is doable to put all your incomes and expenses and bank trans transfers into the software and not do a bank reconciliation. The only downside in that is when you look at reports at the end of the year, you're assuming that the figures are correct. You're, you're not guaranteed that they're going to be correct. Whereas doing a bank rec will pretty much guarantee that those numbers are 100% right.